today's video is going to be about Homebridge and in particular it's going to be Hoobs which is Homebridge out of the box. In particular what I'm going to be looking at is how to actually get it working with Docker on a Synology NAS drive. So the Synology NAS drive I have is DS418 Play. Now officially uh, Docker is not supported however you can actually install it by basically doing a manual install. So essentially what you do is you download the image file and then you go to manual install, you browse to wherever the manual file is, um, more than likely you'll probably have to do this via either a uh, desktop PC, laptop, something like that, a Mac, or you'll have to copy the image file to basically a storage place where you can actually access it. So for example, anywhere that you, you've got access to via your files app. Come across to Docker. So if you go to register and search for hoops, as you can see, you've got the hoops directory and then you can obviously install the image file for that. Once you've installed it, what a lot of people find is that even though it's installed, they can't actually get it running. And it's actually a very simple change essentially that you have to make in order to actually get it working. So what you do is you come across to file station and you need to go to wherever you've got it installed. So in my, my case, I've got a Docker folder, but then I created a separate hoops folder as well. So basically navigate into there and then once you're into here um, what you want to do is come into I believe it's etc yep etc and then you want to come into your config file once you come into your config file this port setting right at the top is what you need to change so originally I believe that's on 80 all you need to do is change that to 8080 and then save it and then come back out go back in and then at that point you should be able to get it running uh, perfectly fine. So whilst I've got this up and running, what I'll do is I'll quickly come into it and just show you the actual container running. So as you can see, it's been up for one day. If I just double tap into it, I'm doing this on the iPad, so some of the uh, screens don't really load very well. If, it, if if you enlarge and shrink in the screens, it doesn't doesn't seem to like it. But essentially, you can do most of it. I actually did this on a PC, um, but. It doesn't really make any difference so basically the reason i actually installed hoops this time around rather than just the normal home bridge is because i wanted to actually test out to see how easy it is to use with regards to the web interface and everything like that and what i did like about it if i can actually just pull it up what i did like about it is the way that you can actually um, almost have it test the code for you So in order to access this, whatever your IP address for your NAS is, so 192.168.0.3, and then what you want to do is your port number, which is 8080. Once you've done that, you need to log in. And as you can see, this is my home page. So I already have certain devices already set up. As you can see, it's running. So you have some of your lights set up and if you come down to plugins so these are essentially the devices that i actually have running currently um i was having a little play about with with it to see what other um, useful plugins i can actually install that would actually help me um there wasn't many that i could actually find because of the fact that i've changed my system up um you, there'll be videos coming out about that so i don't want to uh, well actually by the time you've seen this uh, see this video uh, most of those videos should be out. So basically the main reason um, for this was obviously in one of my previous videos, I actually had an error constantly coming up with regards to the, the drive issue that I had. So if I just come out of this, I'll just go back into storage manual. And the last time I was actually on here, um, you'll remember that I had a an issue with one of the drives. And basically the issue came about because I actually created a storage pool um, incorrectly. So when I added this particular 16 terabyte drive um, incorrectly, basically the first time I went in, I was in a rush, so I quickly just created a storage pool, which basically joined both of these two drives together. Now that obviously gives you redundancy. However, it limits the 16 terabyte drive to to basically 5.45 terabytes, which is what I didn't want. So what I had to do then in order to get it to work properly was literally copy everything across. Uh, from one drive to the other, which didn't actually take too much time because you could just start in the background, go away and come back and it'll basically start, start with the next file, if you like, uh, directory. 
However, what did, was annoying was the fact that because everything had been set up on originally storage pool one, which was the WD red drive, um, it wouldn't actually allow me to wipe that essentially um, without deleting, um, removing every single um, pla package that I actually had installed. So if you come into package center and I come into installed, essentially all of these, um, as you can see, I don't have that many installed now because I actually had to remove them. And uh, um, essentially the way it works is you can choose to have it in your settings whereby you can have it automatically changed to a different volume once it updates. However, um, because most of these don't get updates that often, with some of them, what, well, with most of them, what I had to do was literally remove it and reinstall it. Now, I actually had Docker set up and running perfectly fine ev with everything else. What it did was because these are all built-in apps and they're available straight through the package centers, so Failus Station, Photo Station, Vid Download Station, all of these, when I removed it and reinstalled it, it basically reinstalled in exactly the same way as how it looked when I removed it. However, with Docker, because Docker is not an, uh, an app that, or a package that is actually available for this particular NAS, what actually happened was um, I had to do a manual install. And once you do a manual install, you basically lose everything. So hence why I had to go down reinstalling Homebridge um, in order to get my LED lights working um, with HomeKit. And rather than mess about with uh, Homebridge on its own again, I, th I figured I'll give Hoobs a, a try, essentially, Homebridge out of the box and see how much better or worse it is. So basically, if we come down to the bottom kind of jigsaw pa pattern, this is where essentially you can search for stuff. So if I search for Eufy, as you can see, um, these are the, the three that they've actually got at the moment. I was hoping that they might have had one for if you just click on details, it gives you details of everything. I was hoping that they might have one for the Eufy doorbell, but unfortunately they don't actually have that. So if you come to install plugins and then you go to, sorry, not details. If you go to the configuration, now this will look familiar to anybody who's done anything with Homebridge um, in the past. However, the good thing about this is, let's say for example, I just add an extra comma here. By mistake now you can see just down here at the bottom um, bottom left it says invalid JSON in in a platform basically it's telling you that something is wrong so you know something is wrong before you even go back and try and restart Homebridge and then as soon as you delete that and the file is okay again it'll then let you save so that's the good thing about using um, hoops essentially rather than just homebridge on its own where you had to actually go in and manually edit the config file which essentially is this that's all this is this is just the config file um, but it just makes it a lot easier to actually manage um, being in this way plus what it does do is when you do actually when you do actually install a separate plugin because they're all separated, essentially it gives you separate um, files that you can mess about with without interfering with any existing ones that you had working. So for example, if I install, install a Eufy one now um, and a couple of the ones that I was playing about with, I can actually go in and edit those files independently of the Magic Home Platform um, plugin and it won't affect that, it won't crash that, it won't interrupt that. Um, that will still continue working as, as I want it to which is essentially what, what I wanted from Homebridge anyway, because I could never get the cameras, um, just the, the standard camera ones working in the past. So if I just come into camera, as you'll see, there's quite a few different um, options for, for cameras that you can actually add different platforms, different types that you can actually add, uh, depending on what, what uh, hardware you actually have. But I could never actually get these working previously whilst also having the Magic Home uh, set up on the NAS previously. So, so that's just a little video in terms of anybody out there that was hoping to use Hoops instead of Homebridge um, and was struggling to actually get it installed. So essentially, literally, the only thing that you need to actually do is change the port number in the ETC folder on the in the config file from 80, which is, I believe, why it comes by default and just change it to 8080. That's literally all I had to do. Uh, you then start you up in Docker and obviously you navigate to the same port number essentially. So uh, whatever your NAS drive is, uh, the IP address followed by the port number, which is 8080. That will then bring you here. Um, I believe you do have to go on the website and just create an account first. 
um, that that's just so that you can log in from externally so when you're out and about you can still log in you don't have to be on your home network um, but it's literally username password um, and that's about it email address to actually register it with and nice and simple so yeah I, I would recommend hoops I'll, I'll have a little play about with it and I'll see what other things I can actually get working in my home kit setup the problem at the moment is because I've changed to the Eufy cameras most of the stuff that I actually wanted it for initially um, I've kind of taken out so there's very little left